What happens when a man blessed with unimaginable wealth lets greed overshadow his soul? Let's find out about this man in today's interesting story, in today's video. Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel, Nasiha Studio. Today we will be talking about a man who was blessed with enormous wealth, but his greed overpowered him. In a land rich with history and spiritual significance, there lived a man named Karun, known to many as Korah. His story is one of immense wealth, profound arrogance, and ultimate downfall, serving as a timeless lesson on the perils of greed and pride. Born into the tribe of the Israelites during the time of Prophet Moses, Karun's journey from humble beginnings to staggering opulence and his subsequent demise has been a source of reflection for generations. The Rise of Karun, Humble Beginnings, long before the name Karun, Korah, became synonymous with wealth and arrogance. He was known as a man of humble origins. Karun was born into the tribe of the Israelites, a community that had endured generations of hardship under the oppressive rule of the pharaohs. The Israelites were a people deeply rooted in faith, their identity shaped by the teachings of their prophets and the promise of a better life in the land of Canaan. Karun's early life was marked by simplicity and devotion. He was the son of Izhar, from the lineage of Levi, the same tribe as Prophet Moses and his brother Aaron. Growing up, Karun was surrounded by the rich spiritual traditions of his ancestors, and he was taught the importance of righteousness, humility, and service to others. His family, though not wealthy, was respected within the community for their piety and adherence to the laws of God. From a young age, Karun showed a remarkable aptitude for learning and business. He was intelligent, ambitious, and eager to make a name for himself. His sharp mind and keen understanding of trade quickly set him apart from his peers. Karun began to dabble in small-scale commerce, buying and selling goods among the Israelites. His early ventures were modest, but his success was immediate. He seemed to possess a natural talent for negotiation, always securing the best deals and maximizing his profits. Acquisition of Wealth As time passed, Karun's business acumen continued to grow. He expanded his operations, venturing beyond the boundaries of the Israelite community and engaging in trade with the Egyptians and other neighboring peoples. His ability to navigate the complexities of commerce in a foreign land was impressive, and soon his wealth began to multiply. Karun's rise to wealth was meteoric. He invested wisely, diversified his ventures, and built a vast network of trading partners. His caravans, laden with goods from distant lands, became a common sight on the trade routes. Silk, spices, precious metals, and fine garments all flowed through his hands, bringing him immense profits. He acquired land, livestock, and properties, amassing a fortune that was unparalleled among his people. Despite his growing wealth, Karun remained, at least in the early days, a man of faith. He attributed his success to the blessings of God and the teachings of Moses, who had guided the Israelites through their darkest times. Karun was generous with his wealth, giving alms to the poor, supporting communal projects, and contributing to the upkeep of the religious institutions of his community. His generosity earned him the admiration and respect of the Israelites, who saw in him a model of success and piety. Blessings and Gratitude In those days, Karun's heart was still filled with gratitude. He recognized that his wealth was a divine blessing, a reward for his diligence and his adherence to the laws of God. Karun was a regular at the gatherings of the faithful, where he would listen attentively to the teachings of Moses and the elders. He participated in the rituals and festivals of his people, often providing the necessary resources to ensure that everyone could partake in the celebrations. The people of Israel, still reeling from their long years of bondage in Egypt, took pride in Karun's success. His story was told and retold as an example of how faith and hard work could lead to prosperity. Karun's wealth was seen not just as a personal triumph, but as a symbol of the blessings that awaited the Israelites as they followed the path laid out by their prophets. During this time, Karun was careful to maintain his humility. He dressed simply, avoiding the ostentatious displays of wealth that would later come to define him. His wealth, though vast, did not yet separate him from his people. 
he was still approachable, still involved in the daily life of his community. Karun's home, though grand, was open to visitors, and he was known to personally oversee the distribution of alms and charity. A rising star. As Karun's wealth continued to grow, so did his influence. He became a leader among the Israelites, not through force or ambition, but through the natural respect he commanded. People sought his advice on matters of trade and finance, and he was often consulted on issues of communal importance. His opinions carried weight, not just because of his wealth, but because of his perceived wisdom and righteousness. Karun's relationship with Prophet Moses was, at this stage, one of mutual respect. Moses, who had led the Israelites out of Egypt and through the wilderness, recognized Karun's talents and his contributions to the community. There were times when Moses sought Karun's assistance in matters that required substantial resources, and Karun, eager to support the cause of his people, always obliged. In return, Karun looked up to Moses as a spiritual guide. He appreciated Moses' wisdom and the strength of his leadership. Karun's outward demeanor was one of reverence and respect for the prophet and his teachings. He often spoke of the importance of faith and the need to follow the path of righteousness, echoing the words of Moses in his own dealings. However, beneath the surface, a subtle change was beginning to take place. Karun's wealth, once a source of blessing, was slowly becoming a source of pride. The same wealth that had elevated him in the eyes of his people was starting to create a divide between him and the rest of the community. Karun was no longer just one of the Israelites. He was becoming Karun the wealthy, Karun the powerful. This change was not yet apparent to those around him, but within Karun, a seed of arrogance was being planted. His success, once attributed to divine favor, was increasingly seen by Karun as a result of his own brilliance and hard work. The humility that had once defined him was slowly being eroded by a growing sense of entitlement and self-importance. The turning point, Karun's rise to prominence was not without its challenges. As his wealth grew, so did the demands placed upon him. The more he accumulated, the more he was expected to give. The Israelites, many of whom still lived in poverty, looked to Karun for support. They saw his wealth as a communal resource, something that should be shared for the benefit of all. At first, Karun was willing to meet these demands. He understood the responsibilities that came with his wealth, and he took pride in being able to help his people. But as the requests grew more frequent, and the amounts larger, Karun began to feel burdened by the expectations placed upon him. He started to resent the constant demands, viewing them as an infringement on his hard-earned wealth. It was at this point that Karun's attitude began to shift. The wealth that had once been a source of joy and pride was now becoming a source of anxiety and frustration. Karun started to see himself as a victim of his own success, burdened by the expectations of others. He began to withdraw from his community, distancing himself from the very people who had once admired and respected him. This withdrawal marked the beginning of Karun's descent into arrogance and greed. He no longer saw his wealth as a blessing to be shared, but as a possession to be guarded jealously. The humility that had once defined him was replaced by a growing sense of superiority. Karun, who had risen from humble beginnings to become one of the wealthiest men of his time, was now on a path that would lead to his ultimate downfall. The seeds of pride and greed had been sown, and it was only a matter of time before they would bear fruit. Karun's rise to wealth had been swift and spectacular, but his fall, when it came, would be even more dramatic. The story of Karun, once a tale of success and righteousness, was now beginning to take a darker turn, one that would serve as a timeless lesson on the dangers of allowing wealth to corrupt the soul, the corruption of wealth. As Karun's wealth grew, so too did the changes in his character. The man who had once been known for his humility and devotion began to transform. The riches that had initially seemed a blessing started to corrupt his heart, altering his behavior and his relationship with those around him. In the early days, Karun's success had been marked by a sense of gratitude. He understood that his fortune was a divine blessing, and he remained humble, sharing his wealth generously with his people. But as his riches multiplied, something within Karun shifted. He began to view his wealth not as a gift from God, 
but as a product of his own brilliance and hard work. This sense of self-made success fostered a growing arrogance within him. Karun's connection to his faith, once strong and sincere, began to weaken. The teachings of Prophet Moses, which had guided him in his early years, seemed less relevant to him now. He started to neglect his religious duties, finding them burdensome and unnecessary. In his mind, his wealth was evidence of his superiority, and he believed that he was no longer bound by the same moral and spiritual obligations as the rest of his community. With his newfound arrogance came a desire to showcase his wealth. Karun began to indulge in ostentatious displays of his riches. He organized grand parades through the streets, flaunting his gold, silver, and precious jewels. His home, once a symbol of modesty, was transformed into a palace filled with the finest luxuries. These displays were not merely for his own satisfaction. They were meant to provoke envy and admiration among the Israelites. However, these actions only served to alienate him from his community. The Israelites, who had once admired Karun for his success and piety, began to resent him. They saw in him a man who had become consumed by greed and pride, someone who had lost touch with the values and struggles of his people. Karun was no longer seen as a benefactor, but as a symbol of excess and moral decay. The seeds of Karun's downfall were sown in these moments of arrogance and disconnection. Blinded by his pride, Karun failed to recognize the warnings that surrounded him. Prophet Moses, aware of the changes in Karun, attempted to counsel him, urging him to return to the path of humility and faith. But Karun, intoxicated by his wealth and power, dismissed these warnings with disdain. He believed himself invincible, secure in the protection of his immense fortune. What Karun could not see was that his wealth, which he thought would shield him from any consequence, was leading him towards his own destruction. The corruption of his soul was almost complete, and the stage was set for the dramatic events that would soon follow, events that would serve as a powerful reminder of the dangers of allowing wealth to corrupt the heart and soul. The downfall begins. Prophet Moses, witnessing Karun's descent into arrogance, sought to guide him back to the righteous path. He reminded Karun of the impermanence of worldly possessions and the importance of humility and gratitude. Moses' counsel, however, fell on deaf ears. Karun, now intoxicated by his wealth and power, saw himself as invincible and beyond reproach. In his pride, Karun sought to undermine Prophet Moses, plotting against him and spreading falsehoods to discredit his teachings. This defiance marked a turning point as Karun's actions became increasingly antagonistic towards the very foundation of his faith and community. Divine Retribution The final warning came from Prophet Moses, urging Karun to repent and humble himself before it was too late. But Karun, consumed by his hubris, dismissed the warning with scorn. He believed his wealth to be a shield against any consequence, failing to see the impending doom. In a dramatic turn of events, divine retribution struck. As Karun stood defiantly amidst his riches, the earth beneath him began to tremble. In a moment of divine intervention, the ground opened up and swallowed Karun, his wealth and his followers, leaving behind a stark reminder of the consequences of unchecked arrogance and greed. The Aftermath the Israelites, witnessing the fate of Karun, were struck with awe and fear. His story became a powerful lesson on the dangers of letting wealth corrupt one's soul. The event reinforced the faith of Moses' followers, who saw in it a clear sign of divine justice and the importance of maintaining humility and gratitude. Karun's legacy endured as a cautionary tale, echoing through generations as a reminder of the perils of greed and pride. His story is not just a historical account, but a timeless lesson, relevant to contemporary society, where the pursuit of wealth often overshadows spiritual and moral values. The story of Karun serves as a profound reflection on the human condition and the eternal struggle between material wealth and spiritual integrity. It teaches us that true success lies not in the accumulation of riches, but in the humility and gratitude with which we lead our lives. As we navigate the complexities of modern life, Karun's tale urges us to remain grounded in our values and to remember that wealth, no matter how vast, is fleeting. 
while the virtues of humility and gratitude endure forever.